Hello guys, this is Code in Code and this is 28th lecture of number theory series. In the previous lecture, we have already seen we have been introduced to extended Euclidean algorithm and this is part 2 of that algorithm. In the previous lecture, we have seen extended Euclidean algorithm. Also, we have taken an example and solved that example using pen and paper using extended Euclidean algorithm. Now, in this lecture, we are going to see, we are going to derive the recursive formula and implement it. So to recap, extended Euclidean algorithm is extended version of Euclidean algorithm which is used to calculate GCD of two numbers and extended version of it is also used to find out the coefficient of a and b in the equation ax plus by is equal to GCD of a comma b. So basically we will be finding x and y in the equation ax plus by is equal to GCD of a and b where a and b are integer and the solution x and y will also be integers. Sources are cpalgorithm.com and brilliant.org. Both of them, the link to both of the article I'll be providing in the description of this video. Now, so remember uh, the problem statement I've taken from uh, the example I've taken from the uh, this is the same example that we have taken in the previous lecture. So given two integers a and b, find the solution x y for the equation a x plus b y that is equal to GCD of a comma b. Right? This was the question. We have solved this using pen and paper. Now the algorithm is this. Now see this GCD. Don't worry. This is I'm just showing you here the code. I'll be explaining how this actually works. We are going to derive the actual formula. So GCD function now takes four parameters a, b, x, and y. X and y will finally containing uh, as you can see these are passed by reference. So from main function when you are passing a and b, and you also are passing two variables x and y so after the function call completes x and y will contain the solution of equation ax plus by is equal to gcd of a comma b because these two are passed by reference so any change that is made inside this function will be reflected back to the point where they have been called so for now just ignore all of the line which contain x and y so you see if base b is equal to zero return a which is your GCD, right? If you remember, uh, I have also a lecture for calculating GCD using Euclidean algorithm. If, uh, I have explained the recursive algorithm there as well. So if you see, when b is equals to zero, a is actually the GCD, right? And that is why we are returning GCD from here. This function actually returns the GCD. So also calculates, of course, the coefficient x of x and y for this equation, but it returns GCD. So you see, when b is equal to zero, we are returning a, which is the GCD, right? Otherwise, if that is not the case, then we may we another make GS, uh, GCD call, recursive GCD call, passing b and a modulo b, right? If you remember, this is the exact same algorithm that we have studied to calculate GCD using a uh, Euclidean algorithm. After calculating d, you are returning d. So this is basically calculating GCD and doing some extra work basically this is the same algorithm but we have added some extra line and this is doing some extra work so that we can also calculate the coefficient x and y that's another question is how we have arrived arrived to the conclusion of these four five uh, four lines i guess one two three and four five extra lines we'll be looking at that and we'll be actually deriving this formula now if you take uh, in the example we have taken a and b to be 81 and 57 so we are calculating gcd using uh, euclidean algorithm and i have noted down all of the uh, steps right so 81 is equal to 1 times 57 plus 24 and then uh, 57 is equal to 2 times 24 plus 9 and so on so here you see what happens when you make recursive calls when you make a recursive call from main function to 81 comma 57 it would in turn make a recursive call to b comma a modulo b right again b comma a modulo b and so on and so on till it reaches where b is equals to zero when b is equals to zero it would return three which indicates your gcd right so it would turn three it would turn three 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 finally this will turn three to main function and this is how our recursive function goes right now there is a relation between the successive function calls and uh, a and b of successive function calls so if i call the parameter of this a b and the parameter of the next recursive call to be a1 b1 then there is a relation between them and that is a1 is equals to b right and b1 is equals to a modulo b now this is not a special relation 
so any two consecutive recursive calls will have this relation so if you take this and this if you call this a b and this a1 b1 there is same relation a1 would be equal to b and b1 would be equal to a modulo b this is true for any two uh, consecutive recursive calls right where the first parameter you uh, where the first function called you for example if you take these two consecutive function calls then you take a b these two and a1 b1 these two then this relation holds right because this is actually defined in the uh, recursive definition of Euclidean algorithm this not very special relation is what going to help us calculate the coefficients of the equation ax plus vy is equal to gcd of a comma b how let's see that now you see this is the uh, basically you can call it a uh, stack call function calls i'm calling these two a and b of course again a1 b1 and this is the relation between them now our end goal is actually to find out x and y such that gcd is equals to ax plus by right this is our end goal to find x y such that gcd is equals to ax plus by right instead of just finding x y for these a and b what we are going to do we are going to find out x and y for each a and b's right because from the, these two are a and b and they would make a recursive function call to gcd passing uh, b comma a modulo b right so for each function call we have different instances of a and b and what we are going to do instead of finding out x and y for only original a and b for which we actually want the answer for each recursive calls we are going to find out their coefficients as well so i want to find out x and y such that 3 3 which is gcd gcd is equals to 57x plus 24y similarly for this function call i want to find x y such that gcd is equals to 24x plus 9y and so on now one question must come in your mind is that why are we increasing the the total work we only need to find the solution of this equation now we are saying that we will also find the solution of each equation for each a and b right you are right but the thing is if you have solution of certain equation for example for this the claim is you can actually calculate solution of this from the solution of these x y if you have solution of this equation using the x y of this equation you can actually calculate solution of this so when you calculate solution of this x y of these two can be used to calculate the solution of this equation when you found solution of this you can use their x y to calculate solution of this and finally when we find solution of this we are done with our work now the question is this if you can find solution of this the base case the last recursive call which will be your base case right if you can find out the solution of base case you can actually calculate solution of this and then this and then this and then this and then this right now the question is can you how can we find out the solution of the base case let's do that now in the base case you know a is equals to gcd this this parameter is a and b right we know in the base case a is equals to gcd and b is equals to zero remember when b is equals to zero return a because we know a is gcd and b is zero in the base case a is equals to gcd b is equals to zero so the equation would be of the form the equation ax plus by is equals to gcd would be of this form ax plus by is equals to gcd right so gcd is equals to ax where a is gcd gcd times x dot represents product gcd times x plus zero times y can you find a generic solution of this the values of x and y well yes we can we can always set the value of x to be 1 and value of y to be 0 and this equation the base case would always be true if you put the value of x to be 1 y to be 0 the equation will always satisfy i'm talking about the base case only right because in base case a would be gcd and b would be 0 now i'm leaving the case where uh, i'm choosing y to be 0 you can also choose y to be 10 and this equation will still hold a is equals to 1 and you can choose y to anything and this equation will still hold i'm leaving that to yourself that what happens when you choose 
y to some non-zero number, right? So that is why if you see here, here, this is the base case. When base case is uh, where b is equals to zero, which means we are talking about the base case, a x is equals to one and y is equals to zero, right? Now I hope you understand the base case at least. So in the base case equation would be of the form gcd is equal to gcd times x plus zero times y you can choose any value of y it is independent because it is being multiplied by zero but we, we are choosing zero i'm leaving the case where uh, for you to think what happens when you choose the value of y to be non-zero does it affect the overall answer or not just try yourself and if you put x is equal to one this equation satisfies so in the base case solution would be x is equal to one y is equals to zero now you understand the base case at least so now uh, from just a second now in this equation at least this part is covered right this and this is covered now only this is left so let's see how we can find solution of that as well so let's calculate solution for general uh, for general equation basically now we know solution of the base case now i need to set up a relation between the coefficient of this and this so basically we know the solution of base case now i want to use the solution of base case to calculate solution of the previous function call right so basically a function call this thinks how can i use to calculate uh, how can i use the solution of next function call to calculate my own solution so basically we are going to set up a relation between current function and the next function call between two consecutive function calls so that well, since we already know the solution of base case how we can utilize the solution of this function call to calculate solution of this and so on and so forth so now let's say we have two recursive function calls function one uh, one and two right so i'm calling this the equation one and this as to i'm assuming the variables to be a and b and coefficient to be x and y for this right so we need to find coefficients such that ax plus by is equals to g now for the next recursive call next to this the first one i'm assuming the variable to be a1 b1 and the coefficient to be x1 and y1 and we already know the solution of x1 and y1 right because we know the solution of this and we now want to set up a relation between x y and x1 y1 such that we can if we know x1 y1 we can calculate x and y right so how we how do we set up relation between these so since uh just a second we know that a1 times x plus b1 time y is equals to g right but b1 is equals to a uh sorry a1 is equals to b remember the relation between them b1 uh, sorry a1 is equals to b and b1 is actually a modulo b right so in this equation i've just replaced their uh, replaced them i have replaced them by their values now a modulo b can be calculated or can be replaced by a minus a by b and these are floor function basically 5 by 2 will round up to be 2 because it would be 2.5 and any fraction would be removed so this is floor function so a mod b can be uh, written down as a minus a by b floor function times b right so if you replace a mod b by this you you are going to get this so b times x plus y times a minus a by b times b now if you rearrange them in such a way that all terms containing b are together or all terms containing a are together you will get this so sorry all terms containing yeah a are together and all terms containing b are together so this is a times y1 we have taken it together now this term contains b and this terms this term also contains b so if you take them together you will get this b times x minus y uh, sorry x1 minus y1 times a by b now if you compare this equation with this equation because we want relation between x y and x1 y1 right if you compare these two equations, so if I write it down in terms g is equals to ax plus by, we would see that both in both of these equations, left hand side is equal. I'm talking when I write this equation as g is equals to ax plus by, right? So both in these two equations, left hand side would be equal. 
so the right hand side will be equal as well so you can compare the coefficients of a in both the equation a is same so x is equals to y1 similarly compare the coefficients of b coefficient of b is y in this equation should be equal to coefficient of b in this equation if you compare these two you would get x is equals to y1 and y is equals to x1 minus y1 times a by b if you compare these two equation and now you know how when you know the solution of next recursive function call you can use the solution of next recursive call to calculate solution of your own and that is why now you understand the whole idea see if it is base case you already know the solution would be x is equal to 1 y would be 0 and you will be returning a which is your gcd right if it is not the base case that means you need to make a recursive call and try to find out their solution that is why you have declared two variables x1 and y1 to get the solution of the next recursive call and then you would make gcd call to them passing x1 y1 by reference so that when this function call is done x1 and y1 contain solution of next recursive call and since this function returns gcd so we are saving it here so that we can return gcd ourselves finally when you have x1 and y1 basically the solution of next recursive call you can calculate your own how x is equals to y1 and y is equals to x1 minus y1 times a by b and that is the solution now you understand how this function works from main function you would simply make call to a b which would be two integers and x comma y and after this function calls complete x and y would contain the solution of equation ax plus by is equal to gcd of a comma b so now you understand the algorithm i hope you have idea how this works i hope i was able to make everything clear if you still have some doubt you can of course ask it down uh, ask it in the comment section so thank you guys for watching and till the next video drops keep coding thank you